Stairs. Seventh career Grand Slam. Stairs is hitting 214 this year, but who cares? The A's sixth Grand Slam this season. 4-1 Oakland. Bottom five. Stairs again with a man on. That's a drive. And Ruben Rivera all glove all the time. A's up 4-2. Tony Gwynn, he was two for four. He's hitting 280, but here... He is robbed by Matt Stairs. Stairs and the A's find a way, winning 5-4. Oakland with its six win in seven games. Gil Heredia goes seven, allowing three earned runs. He strikes out six, improving to seven and one. And on the mound facing Barry Bonds. Bonds, 492 feet, the longest homer in Edison Field history. His 25th homer. That's the most he's had before the All-Star break in his career, and he's homered at four straight games. Rob Nen facing Darren Erstad. Bottom nine, runners on first and second. Anaheim down one. Erstad, three for four. He still leads the AL in hitting, 384. Look at this. The Angels tie up the game at five. Next batter, Kevin Stocker with a winning run on third. Stocker, suicide squeeze. Great play to force Spezio out at home. The tag applied. The game remains tied. Wait a minute, there's an argument here. Can we look at that again? Because I don't know. That looks safe, didn't it, John? I'm not an officer. All right, great. Neither am I, but we can be, well, we have to make a call. Mo Vaughn ends this thing. Mo Vaughn, who missed his up-close date with Gary Miller, comes through for the Angels in the evening. Mo two for four, and that game-winning hit driving in Erstad, and the Angels get it done against Rob Nen, who blows his second save in as many nights. And All in Rangerville. Eric Gagne on the mound, Luis Alisay in the box. Alisay, oh, look at the stab by Dave Hansen, and then flips to the pitcher covering. Good, solid, fundamental baseball. You like to see it. Next batter, Rusty Greer, the former driller, and Greer jacks it deep, but Sean Green patrolling right field. Greer, he's 0 for 4, is averaging down to 213. The Dodger D is tight. They were scoreless after three. Bases loaded in the fifth. Hansen, it's a chopper. Not pretty, but plenty effective. Grizzlonic scores, Green scores, the Dodgers lead 4-zip and win it by a count of 7-1. Pudge Homer had half of the Rangers' six hits. The rookie, Gagne, six shutout innings. Ryan, top of the third, Rockies trailing 2-zip. Jeff Cirillo, the former beer maker, taking Brett Tomko deep. And that ball is... Well, it's something. Cirillo thinks it's a home run. Tagged out there in a rundown. So what do we have here? Buddy Bell comes out to argue to apparently no avail. We look again. As the ball comes down, the arrow appears, hits the yellow padding on the top of the wall in right field. Cirillo gets credit for a long yeah, single instead of a three-run homer. That ends this edition of Know Your Ground Rules. Top to third, Brian Bohannon pitches to Ricky Henderson. Henderson, well, you're out. That's probably why he left with a stiff neck. Top of six, Rob Ramsey pitching to Todd Elton, who is one for three. His average now a lowly 408, but that's good enough there for a base hit. But... J.P. Hunter comes him down at second. Don't get greedy. Mariners win it by a count of 4-1. to one. Tomko pitched five strong innings to improve to 2-0 at the safe. More on him in a bit. I also want to tell you that day two of the baseball draft, Rocky selected Virginia Tech QB and Heisman candidate Michael Vick in the 30th round. Vick hasn't played baseball since eighth grade. Our showcase highlight. Top of the first, Ray Durham. Durham facing Ron Vallone. Vallone, who lasted just four innings in his last outing, hits Durham, and then Vallone walks Frank Thomas in the next batter, Vallone. Free pass to Maglia Odonez. Jack McKeon, well, simply says this is so not funny. Bases loaded, Carlos Lee had it going on. Four for five, two doubles, four RBI. That's an 0-2 pitch down the line. Durham and Thomas would score. Chicago gets on the board, 2-0. It was 4-0, bottom one. Dante Bichette at the plate. Not much there. Ken Griffey Jr. just tackles Ray Durham to break up the double play. Take another look. Griffey perhaps letting out some frustration. Hitting just 214 this year. The textbook tackle, no interference called on the play. And then uh, Ken Jr. has a good laugh. While uh, Durham shows Griffey how we tackled him. Top of the second, two on. Thomas finds the sweet spot. An 0-2 pitch yet. Thomas' 12th home run of the year. It's 7-0 in Sox. Two hanger, as we say, he's just throwing it up there. That's a gift. As for Ron Vallone, seven earned runs and one in a third innings pitch. Yuck. 7-0, bottom four, Griffey Jr., long driver. Jeff Abbott burning some fat calories. Great catch. Abbott also two hits, three RBIs at the play. Griffey Jr., 0 for 2, two walks. His, oh, yeah, his only hit was that tackle on Ray Durham. Top of the ninth, 14-6, White Sox, two on. Carlos Lee was not done. Looking for space, finds it. Dimitri Young, all sorts of trouble. Thomas would score. Both teams combining for 31 hits in this game. The White Sox win 17 to 12. 
Despite Dante Bichette's eighth career Grand Slam, the 29 runs the teams combined to score the third most this season. The Reds giving up their most runs since losing 17 to 9 to Atlanta on May 1st, 1985. Now about that Frank Thomas milestone. Tuesday, he became just the sixth active player with 300 homers, 1,000 runs scored, 1,000 RBI. Jerry, you get the sense that the showcase highlight may focus a lot this summer on both the Reds and the White Sox. In particular, Chicago are now playing as good a ball as they have had all year. They say it's great to see Frank Thomas smiling, and of course, he's hitting. They face Ron Vallone in this one, two through six in the Chicago order. Outstanding with 14 RBIs between them. When they start off early, you pick it up in the first inning. They get the bases loaded. Carlos Lee drives the ball for a double, drives in two runs. The middle three, Thomas, Ordonez, and Lee, tonight eight for 12. When you get the middle guys carrying that, that 14 RBIs amongst those guys, that is a dangerous combination. All right, and the Reds figure with Vallone going, they'd be able to hold things intact. It didn't happen with 29 runs coming across. Ken Griffey Jr. again goes 0 for 2, but we saw him, I guess, auditioning for the Bengals. <laughs> He's always wanted to play football. I mean, he put on a tackle on this That's touch play here. That was amazing. And the funny thing is, he even got a laugh out of it. He got away with it. They didn't even call an automatic double play. They just got the force on him. Chicago White Sox continue to impress, and of course they've gotten good pitching, but Jerry Manuel doesn't get a lot of the credit. People don't talk about what, he's been, what he has meant to that club. Well, Jerry Manuel started in spring training when he sat down with Frank Thomas. He confronted the main guy on that team, sat down, they got together, butted heads, and they worked it out, and that set an example for the rest of this ball club. I think also you look at what Von Joshua, the hitting coach, has done with this team. They come to bat in practice, they are so focused. They work on things. They're not that trying to hit the ball at right the there, ballpark. Sure. They're getting men over. They're bunting. They're doing well, fundamental so things, and it's paying off, and that's why they put up big numbers that's night cool. in, night out. Yeah, and they're doing it against some of the better teams. All right, HR, that is your showcase highlight. We'll see you again, certainly throughout the course of the summer. Linder, back to you. Harry Sutton taking over for Mack at first. And how about this one? Andy Bennis giving what up with Casito Polanco filling in for Vina. That's a nice play by both the backups, I would think. Bottom of the fifth. Cards down 4-2. J.D. Drew off Chris. Bustle. That's special. Drew hadn't hit a home run since May 8th, and now he had two in the game, eighth of the year. Cards tied at four. Bottom of the seventh, Sutton. Got a man on third and less than an out. Getting the runner home from third with less than two outs is fundamental baseball. Sutton does his job. Jim Edmonds score, and the Cards win 5-4. Fourth multi-homer game of Drew's career. Jermaine dies. Homer a day trick ends at four. None of the hamstring afflicted expected back before Friday. Indians and Brewers, 1989 unis to commemorate the release of the movie Major League. To go. Hey, all you Wahoo maniacs, watch as Dave Justice swings really hard. That's too high. What do you mean it's too high? Too high. Eh, I forget what's going on. 15th homer of the season for Justice, 250th of his career. Indians up three There's zip. Chuck Snyder. Finley working against his former number or the opposite number. The bunt by John Snyder turns into a 5-6-4 double play. 17 ground ups on the night for Finley, and the Indians win at 4-2. His fifth win, third complete game of the season. Gave a and Houston. Eric Milton pitching to Craig Biggio, and Biggio gets him. Right off the left leg, Vigio's safe at first, but what about Milton, you wonder? He'd have to leave after two innings. A bruised lower left leg, Eric Milton, so talented his day-to-day. -day. Jose Lima to Corey Kosky. Lima, five Ks on the night. He was strong, but we're tied at one, two out. Perez to Matt Lawton. Richard Hidalgo gets it. Christian Guzman waved around third. We have a play at the plate. Guzman, safe. Twins win. Jose Lima did not allow a homer for the first time in his last eight starts, but still suffers his eighth loss in nine decisions. In fact, neither team hit a homer at homer friendly end run. Only the second time that's happened in 30 games there. Tigers and Pirates. Tigers not one big happy family. They're up to nothing. Brad Osmus gives a sign for a curve. Doug Brokale shakes him off, throws heat, and Mike Benjamin makes him pay. Benjamin ends up with a triple. And now the score is 2-1. to one. Now, after this hit, you know, Brokale and Osmus are going to have a discussion to discuss their disagreement. Pinch hitter Adrian Brown up next. See if they get it right this time. Brown. Brown's out on the broken bat to Shane Halter at second, and the inning is over. Now, after the inning, Brokale and Osmus let it out. You know, it's good to let it out. It's good to express yourself. I mean, even if it's bad. You can get sick if you keep it in. Willie Blair. It's very helpful. Willie Blair and four relievers. 
taps an artist. He retired the first nine he faced, struck out seven in the game. Bottom five, no score, one on, one out. Armando Reynoso against Augie Ojeda. Ojeda sparking a three-run fifth inning against Reynoso. Turn award having problems. Damon Buford scores from first. Ojeda, great hustle. He's going to come in with a stand-up triple. one nothing Chicago. It was 4-1 Chicago in the ninth. Tappany taking care of business against Matt Williams. Tappany throws a five-hitter, and the Cubs win. D-backs lose four in a row for the first time in close to a year. Tappany hurls a second complete game this season, working at least seven innings in each of his last eight starts. Braves losers of four or five, hosting Toronto. Bottom one, no score. Frank Castillo on the mound, facing Chipper Jones. And Chipper, so money, he doesn't even know it. His 13th home run of the year puts the Braves up one to nothing. Bottom six now, bases loaded, two out, Andres Colorado. Broken bat, grounder, Paul Quantrill can't find it. Chipper Jones goes down and is out at second. Take another look. What happened to Chipper? Twists his ankle, sprains it as he tries to avoid the tag. Chipper says he'll be a quick healer, and he's confident he'll be fine. But it is an ankle sprain. The x-rays were negative. Bottom nine, runners on first and second, two out. 20-year-old Rafael Furcal, soon to be a human highlight film, opposite way. Brian Jordan will come in to win it. For Cal's dream is to win a World Series and buy his parents a new home. For this night... They do not count deposit slips once the game starts. Top of the second, no score. Javier Vasquez against Bernie Williams, and that ball is... Oof. Yanks 9-0 and when Bernie homers. Yanks go up one zip. It's Bernie's 12th of the year. Moving on, bottom of the third, Yanks still leading one zip, and Mike Mordecai. Even metrically, that is a long shot. His only hit of the game, third home run of the season. We're knotted up at one. Top eight now, Yanks up to one. Tino Martinez. Distance is good, but placement also a key. That is fair. His sixth of the season, he was two for four, raising his average to 272, and with the bases loaded, Bernie comes through. His team now 10-0. When he homers here, he clears the bases. Lede, Jeter, Spencer all score. Yanks go up 8-1. Williams, four RBIs in the Expos season. I six-game winning streak over. And for the bad news, Tuesday, the Quebec government told the Expos no more financial help. Lead owner Jeffrey Loria may now try and buy out the Quebec shareholders, clearing the way for a potential move out of Montreal. Red Sox beat the Marlins with some ninth-inning magic on Monday. Here in the top of the fourth, Nomar garcia Par with a man on. That ball is no mark. Off Jesus Sanchez, fifth of the year for no mark, ties the game at two. Top of the fifth, Ramon Martinez at the plate, second at bat of the game and of the year. And his brother, of course, Pedro, encouraged being as only family members can. The 2 2 pitch, Ramon drills it. Mike Lowell hustling, close play at first, but no, a tape measure single for Ramon and Pedro says hitting is in our DNA. Next batter, Jeff Fry, shoots one to right side, Marcotze coming up with it, and now it's a race. Ramon does not want to get dirty in standing up, Pedro says, brother, you got to slide, hit the dirt. No matter, he's safe on third when Nomar comes up, and Nomar delivers his 28th RBI of the year. He's now hitting 374, and Ramon scores his 33rd career run, first in the AL, and the Red Sox win it 4-3. Martinez now 8-1 lifetime against the Fish as a... D-Rays Phillies because you, the viewer, demanded the highlights. Bottom line to Glanville facing Roberto Hernandez, and whoop, Miguel Cairo, good arm strength, bad throw. Glanville makes it to second base. On the play, safe. Somebody get the ball that's dangerous. Next batter. Kevin Sefcik, one on, two out, hits are outstanding. Glanville will score to tie the game at three. Phils, extra frames for the third straight game in the top of the tenth. Mike DeFelice off Jeff Brantley. Dublin to left center. Jose Guillen will score. Steve Cox will follow him home. And the Devil Rays will win it by a final of five to three. DeFelice scores the go-ahead run in the twelfth Monday, drives in the goal.